Well, folks, Toyota is not giving up on hydrogen anytime soon. The automaker is actually doubling down on its R&D efforts to hopefully commercialize fuel cell vehicles and electric powertrains on the road by 2030. Although the Toyota Mirai in many eyes was a complete flop, it did end up selling quite well in certain markets like California and gave a very good user experience to its customers even though yes, in other parts of the country and across the world, hydrogen infrastructure is still very much lackluster. But just like the likes of BMW, Volkswagen and even Hyundai are investing in their own hydrogen programs, Toyota, which is arguably the company that kicked off this entire industry, is deciding to stick to its roots despite the new CEO that just came in. Because let's be honest, the hydrogen skeptics rejoiced over the past few months as it turned out the new CEO of Toyota would potentially focus more on electric vehicles powered by batteries instead of their hydrogen program. But from some recently released details, we have learned that Toyota's vision in the hydrogen sector is actually about to get a lot stronger. And even though in many cases the lackluster sales of fuel cell vehicles have sparked very low interest in them, Toyota still believes that in the long term this technology will provide more benefits to the industry and the decarbonization race than battery electric. So in this video I want to explain exactly why Toyota thinks that as well as the massive effort it will take to bring down the cost of green hydrogen fuel over the next five years. But as usual guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's understand the motivation behind this video, which was Toyota's recent push in Germany to adopt 200 hydrogen powered Toyota Mirais in a two year trial in the country. This is a pretty big deal because the Mirai program from a commercial standpoint has been pretty slow throughout the pandemic. Although sales jumped as the EV boom skyrocketed throughout 2020 and 2021, sales of hydrogen vehicles obviously lagged those of battery electric. And there's obviously extremely good reason for that. And well, it has all to do with the fact that hydrogen is a fuel and a commodity, whereas electricity is widely available at every single household in North America. That is the simple reason to the fact why Tesla, BMW, and other EV makers have succeeded in selling their battery-powered vehicles over Toyota, because electricity is available and people use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Hydrogen has still yet to see a commercial push like we have seen for gasoline. And it has all to do with the idea that there are no hydrogen vehicles that can make it profitable for Shell or Chevron or ExxonMobil to do so. And if you haven't realized it by now, this is a chicken and egg problem. A classic industry dilemma that we have faced in the industrial age many times before. And this time around, I think the story is going to be no different than how it played out for gasoline vehicles and the electric vehicle industry over the past 20 years, in that hydrogen technology will indeed catch on on a commercial scale for not only decarbonizing heavy trucks, aircraft, and ships, but potentially also cars as the back-end infrastructure grows. And based on Toyota's recent announcement of the Toyota Crown having a hydrogen fuel cell model, it's pretty clear that the world's biggest and most successful automaker agrees with that statement. This company is the pioneer of the value car, not only in Japan, China, Europe, but also in North America, with the Toyota Corolla and the Toyota Camry and the RAV4 being top 10 best-selling vehicles for years on end. To think that Toyota does not know what they're doing with their Mirai program and their emphasis on green hydrogen would be a very poor mistake. This company has some of the most talented engineers in the world, engineers that have more experience than engineers you might even see at someone like Tesla. Even though battery technology has improved, it's important to realize that 
hydrogen is a way to decarbonize, not only electrify. In a perfect world, owning a hydrogen vehicle would be much more practical than a battery electric one. Not only would you be comparing times of refueling to gasoline of under 10 to 5 minutes, but you also are not hauling around a heavy battery that is not only eating up onto your range, but causes safety issues with thermal runaway, and even uses quite a lot of rare earth metals like lithium and cobalt. Those metals face violent price fluctuations, and when you consider the fact that a hydrogen tank can be emptied in a matter of milliseconds in the case of a crash, just like with an airbag, the safety aspect is actually better in some cases than battery electric. Don't get me wrong, EVs are going to play a critical role in this overall electrification race, but hydrogen also has its benefits that will suit certain industries more than others. And really the only thing holding back the commercialization of this technology for the automotive industry is a lack of backend infrastructure. As a matter of fact, infrastructure is probably the wrong word. It's more about logistics because we have infrastructure already in place to transport hydrogen gas and hydrogen carriers like methanol and ammonia because this gas has been used for hundreds of years in the manufacturing of fertilizer, glass, and steel. Global hydrogen demand surpassed the 91 metric ton limit and maximum that we reached in 2019, just in 2021. When you divide it up by sectors, overall demand is rising in refining and ammonia production. And what's better is that global hydrogen production also grew by a similar comparable rate. And overall, it reached a level of around 95 metric tons with expectations of it growing to almost 180 metric tons within the next eight years. That is a compound annual growth rate of more than 15%. Given the fact that this industry was very stale for the past five years, this incremental increase from now all the way to 2030 is going to be a pretty big deal, especially as you can see in the electricity sector. And this electricity sector demand is exactly what a company like Toyota is betting on. They believe that renewably produced hydrogen will scale up decentralization of this industry which will then allow refueling infrastructure and different supply chains to be built around the fuel, reducing the cost to the end consumer. This is exactly how it played out for diesel and gasoline and even E85 in the 1900s, and most likely is going to play out very similarly for hydrogen, potentially on an even larger scale because of just how much this gas is already used in industrial processes. And when corporations in the shipping, aviation, and rocketry space start using green hydrogen on a bigger scale, it'll automatically tickle down to the consumer, which is where fuel cell vehicles will most likely be the best option. And the same country that led the industrialization of the gasoline internal combustion engine is also betting the same thing on hydrogen transportation with Germany's public transport company ordering more than 52 hydrogen buses and rejecting all battery electric models. What do you all think? Is Toyota shooting in the dark with their hydrogen bet, or is there actual material value in the investments they're making today? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.